Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Horrific Death of Queen Victoria Inside her bedchamber in Osborne House, her favourite residence, on the 22nd of January 1901, at the age of 81, Queen Victoria was gravely ill. She was a queen who had been on the throne for a huge amount of time, and the impending death of Victoria was a big problem for the nation that she had reigned over. It was such a long time since a monarch had died that the president and etiquette of a state funeral had also died out, and not one person in the country had any experience in dealing with this sort of event. But inside of her bedroom, the queen, who had ruled for 63 years, was slipping away, surrounded by her family. She was a woman who was not very well, and she was also a queen who had suffered with depression and great grief and upset for years following the death of her husband, Prince Albert. But what happened in Queen Victoria's final moments? The year 1900 was regarded as Queen Victoria's horrible year. The Boer War, which had been fought between Britain and Africa, was on her mind, and she was rather anxious about this conflict. But also, her eldest son, the Prince of Wales, was travelling through Belgium, and he had been shot by a young boy who was protesting against the war. But then, her eldest daughter Vicky, also known as the Dowager Empress of Germany, had been diagnosed with breast cancer that was quickly spreading from other areas of her body, and she was inside her castle in Kronberg in severe pain. More horror came for the frail queen, as in the August of 1900, she was informed by a telegram that her favourite son, Alfred the Duke of Edinburgh, who was a heavy drinker and chain smoker, had died from throat cancer. Victoria wrote, Oh God, my poor darling Alfie gone too, my third grown-up child. It is hard at 81. But further news would come, and her beloved grandson, Prince Christian Victor, the son of her daughter, Princess Helena, had also died as he suffered from a fever while serving with the British army in South Africa. But as 1900 came to an end, many tears would be shed as the Queen's best friend, Lady Jane Churchill, was discovered dead in bed whilst visiting Victoria at Osborne House. But the Queen was greatly affected, and she was quite clearly not well. She was 81, which by the standards of the Victorian times was rather incredible, and she was once sprightly, but this spark was going. She would not eat as much as she did, and she lost a huge amount of weight, and also Victoria was stuck in a wheelchair, and she could not see very well, and she often became very confused. She had reigned for over 60 years, and no one in Britain even thought about a time without her on the throne, similarly to what has happened recently with the death of Elizabeth II. She reigned for so long that no one had known any different. Because of this, her children would not accept that she was ill, and no preparations were made for her death. Victoria knew death was on the horizon as she wrote, Another year begun. I am feeling so weak and unwell that I enter upon it sadly. The Queen at this time was inside of Osborne House, her favourite residence, which is on the Isle of Wight. She would spend her final days here, but the Queen was rapidly going downhill. But the royal doctors had to contend with the fact that the family could not see what was happening. Her doctor, Sir James Reed, who had treated her for decades, knew that Victoria was approaching her final days, and he spoke to the royal family about this. But none of them would accept that Victoria who was considered the grandmother of Europe, was close to death. They could not even accept this when the Queen was delirious in her final moments. Princess Helena and Princess Beatrice did not believe that their mother could die, and they tried to keep things as normal as possible. But the doctors continued to squabble amongst themselves also, and many members of the royal family, when they were summoned to Osborne, were reluctant to come. The Prince of Wales and Victoria's heir was disappointed that he had to cancel weekend plans and the Duke of Connaught was at the time en route to Berlin to celebrate 200 years of the Prussian monarchy. Others were at the theatre, but Sir James Reed, the doctor, would telegraph Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany, but he realised the gravity of the situation. When he received this, he cancelled all of the celebrations and, along with the Duke of Connaught, 
The pair travelled to England, setting sail, and he then forced the hand of the royal family to make news of the Queen's illness public and to prepare the nation. The announcement took her subjects by surprise, and one headline reads, Queen unconscious, sinking fast. But the tabloids had never handled this sort of story before, and they speculated actually that she was getting better. The Queen also, it's believed, could not accept that death was coming, and she asked her doctor, Am I getting better? Saying, I would like to live a little longer, as I have a few things to settle. Sir James then said, Yes, Your Majesty has been very ill, but you are now better. Chances are that this was the feeling better than some people experience before their deaths, before they go very downhill. And this is what would happen with Victoria. From the 17th of January 1901, the Queen suffered from a number of serious strokes, and with this the entire royal family was ordered to get to the Isle of Wight rather quickly. The government business then stopped as the Queen could not work and do her duties, and there were brief talks of her son acting as regent for the short period. But Osborne had an influx of guests. There were calls being made to the house every minute from the media asking for news, and people gathered outside of the gates. But Victoria was then sat there in bed, surrounded by her family in her small bedroom. The Bishop of Winchester was with her, along with the rector of a local church who prayed for her and sung hymns. Kaiser Wilhelm II, her grandson, sat there at her left side for hours, and her doctor held her hand. The Queen could not see, and she said, Sir James, I am very ill. But James Reed, the doctor, continued to reassure her. He said that she would get better, and nurses also offered support. Seeing Victoria in this state was distressing for the royal family, and there was a great deal of crying from the royal family, but then each son, daughter and grandchild one by one was summoned to kiss the Queen's hand and to say their final goodbye. At half past six in the evening, on the 22nd of January 1901, Queen Victoria died at the age of 81. The news of her death came out before the new king, Edward VII, had completed the formality of accepting the crown. An announcement was pinned on a bulletin board of the gates of Osborne House. The news of her death spread quickly around the world, and newspapers began to print their editions, and the bells of St Paul's Cathedral tolled across the city of London. People wore black, and shop windows were covered in black mourning cloth. But as mentioned, there was panic in the royal family, as no one knew what the procedure was to plan a state funeral. Panic also gripped the government as Victoria requested a full military state funeral. She did not want to be embalmed and she did not want to lie in state and she specified she wanted white ponies pulling the gun carriage that her coffin was placed on. She also asked to be buried away from Westminster and St George's Chapel and at Frogmore with her husband Albert. Kaiser Wilhelm II offended the royal family as he ordered a death mask to be cast of Victoria's face against her wishes. But also the Duke of York became very ill and the royal undertaker who swiftly arrived from London had forgot to bring the coffin. This meant that a local man was called upon to make the coffin of the longest reigning monarch at the time that Britain had ever had. It was said that the organisation was chaos and when the coffin was built it was sent to Osborne House. The Dr. Reed, along with the help of the Queen's dresser, Mrs. Tuck, helped to prepare Victoria for the coffin. Victoria did not want to be embalmed, so on the floor of the coffin, the doctor scattered charcoal to stop smells. They also cut her hair and dressed Victoria in a white silk dressing gown with a garter ribbon and star, with her wedding veil placed over her face. Then after this, the Duke and the Kaiser and the King then lifted her body into the coffin, performing a final duty and goodbye for her. As the family left, the doctor and Mrs Tuck performed the secret duties asked of them by the Queen. They placed a number of objects, including the wedding ring of John Brown, her Scottish servant, on her finger, and a lock of his hair in the coffin. The funeral procession was huge, and her cortege crossed the Solent, and a huge amount of soldiers came to London to be involved in the procession. It was the largest military procession since the Duke of Wellington's funeral, and it lasted two hours, but during this the coffin almost fell off the carriage, and it was not short of drama. The service in St George's Chapel was rather chaotic, led by two archbishops who arrived too early. Also, the navy was half empty. 
in the chapel and they needed to have invited many more people. But then the Queen made her final journey to Frogmore, where she was interred inside of the same mausoleum of her husband, Albert, and today they are laid to rest next to each other. Queen Victoria was a monarch who oversaw a huge amount of change in Britain. During her time on the throne, she had overseen large parts of the Industrial Revolution, ushering huge change to the country, and she would also become the head of the British Empire, which had a huge renaissance in its power and influence. She became known as the Empress of India, but the Queen, after 63 years on the throne, died inside of her favourite house. Her nation greatly missed and mourned her, and many at the time believed she was infallible and would have lived forever. But this was not the case, and surrounded by her family after being ill for some time, Queen Victoria died. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.